good. Are you excited? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, you got me into to real estate. You said, Cloud, you'd be good at uh, getting into real estate. Why don't you uh, go and do the, the, t- uh, the course at TAFE at, at Randwick? And uh, you know what? The rest is history, right? I mean, I did that, <laughs> got into, p- into property management, went through the sales process and, and now coaching for the last, uh, you know, seven years with oh. one-on-ones from, you know, green agents who are green starting from zero yeah. and agents who are writing seven figures today. And uh, I never knew that know? story until you told me. <laughs> I didn't realise I had that much influence Mate, on you. you had a massive influence. What, what I did know, Cloud, when I said that to you was you've always been honest and you'd always been transparent. You always had a lot of friends. Yes. And those three qualities are what are successful in real estate. So when you train somebody today and yeah. you coach people, they know they're getting what's best for them. Yeah, thank you. Because they were the qualities you had. That's why I said to you, and you're very good with people. Perfect. Thank this you. is just a people business. It's not a property business. No, exactly. Our listeners and um, teams that are working with just need to know, it, try and work from the heart, not from the head in this business. 100%. It's a, it's a people business. If you connect with the people, yep. and I've always connected with people pretty well, and uh, I've got to tell you, I'm not the greatest uh, around individual things about individual properties around, you know, what tiles and what roof. Mm. And But I, I, I've been able to connect with people and people have employed me because of the, the connection. Absolutely. So if we understand that, that's a big part of our business. Well, like you said, Matt, and just reaffirming what you're saying, two <laughs> things I believe, that nothing will ever change if you have these two qualities. 110% service and a level of humanness. Oh, 100%. You, yeah. you have that, you will succeed in this game. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, look, I've just come back from Hong Kong. I'll just share yeah. a quick story and we get on with it. Um, I've never seen service with about like how to service people just from when, you know, you land at the hotel, you get yeah. to a hotel, go to a restaurant. They have made service like their, it's, their, it's their main thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if I took a lot of learnings out of the five days I spent there with my wife, um, phenomenal. Everywhere we went, everybody was, it's my pleasure times 10. Yes. What can we do for you? Even in the hotel, things like, you know, they took us to the room and checked us in in the room with hot towels and things like that, not standing there waiting. I never waited for a single thing. Mm. So I'm going to apply that theory back into this business immediately. Yeah. Is, you know, tomorrow's too late. Yes. That's the first thing. Yes. And now I think like half an hour is too long. Can I, can you know, I, if you can't fix it in two minutes, it, it can't be fixed. Absolutely. You know what today I think, Maddie, is this. The competition today is no longer your Ray Whites or your LJ Hookers mm. of the world or Richardson Ranch or <laughs> McGrath's or whoever that may be. Today your competition is the consumer experience. Yeah, 100%. That's your competition, like yeah. how you conduct your open homes, how you get back to people, um, how you're connecting with them. That's that's the experience they want. And if yeah. you're not providing that experience today and you're still like living under a rock and trying to do open homes like they were 10 years ago, you'll be flushed out of this game. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. And in Hong Kong I learned that instant coffee's too slow. <laughs> um, you know, it's not fast enough. <laughs> that, that, that's the, like I saw a lady um, at – one of the one of the restaurants like she was serving three people at once my goodness like i just think that is amazing yeah. and i just i sat back and watched most people probably wouldn't analyze that but i did yeah and i thought you know what um you know it's a huge economy over there and it's there's eight million people sitting on a little island there's no time to waste no absolutely we not. can take that theory and bring it back here speed is a new currency yeah our businesses could all triple well, you there's some, some new ideas for 2018. Yep. That's it. <laughs> ready to kill, have a killer year. Okay, Matt, are you ready to jump ready into this? Ready to go. Let's You're roll. Fr- I'm, 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 okay. I'm, I'm scared. I'm freaking Let, out. Let's go, Cloud. So we've got Angela from Langan Simmons St. Fantastic. George. I don't know what a question is, but we're ringing and dialing her in now. So let's go. Let's see if we can hear it. Brace for impact. Can you hear it? Yep. yep. Beautiful. So <laughs> here we go. So like phone a friend sort of thing. I know it is, isn't it? <laughs> hey, the old, the old uh, Who wants to be a millionaire? Angela, good morning. It's uh, Claudio and Matt LaHood here from The Mentors. How are you? Really well. Good morning, guys. Hey, Angela, how are you? <laughs> hey, if, if, can we just give you, if, if we stuff up, Angela, it's because this, you're on episode one. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. good. Thank it's you. Always room for improvement, right? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll only get better from here on. Um, Angela, so uh, thanks for joining Matt and I. What is the pressing question that you have for us? Okay, well, I think, um, you know, coming back fresh year, recharged, um, I think the biggest sort of um, reflection that I've had uh, after my break is that um, we all saw that the the market was tightening and (coughs) listings were getting a little bit harder. I think, um, you know, I'd be curious to to sort of hear your forecast and what lies ahead of us, but um, what I would love to know on how I can prepare for what's coming is that um, 
I'm finding a lot of um, a lot of my competitors out there are doing you know whatever it takes to to secure the listing um, and really enticing their future vendors financially. Um, I think that you know what what can I do uh, that would prepare me to to stand my ground and my belief and self worth that you know I don't want to join that group. Yeah, great question, Angela. I, I'd, I'd probably say, um, are you feeling a little bit of fear and uncertainty going into 2018 with the changes of yeah. what's happening in the market? Okay. Yeah, so, definitely. So, Matt, for you, you've, you've, you've had like over 20 years experience in real estate, right? So, yeah. has Matt LaHood ever felt a fear or a level of uncertainty? Has Matt LaHood ever been there as yeah. a salesperson? Look, absolutely. Um, Angela, f- how I see that is that's the same problem that's been in the game for 30 years, right? There's always somebody doing something cheaper. There's always somebody offering. It's not just the current market now. And when, when we're all out of the business in, say, 30 years or whatever, the same problem will be happening, right? Um, it's in every yes, industry. Course. So the first thing is um, you've got to take a position. That's the first thing I learned. So I took a position where I, th- I said to myself, I don't want to work under this fee, and I don't want to work under that marketing because I know I'm going to over-service the clients. I'm going to build a team that will over-service them. I'll get cl- um, the best result in the marketplace. And I actually believe that. So first thing you need to do is have the belief that you're the best agent and you're going to do the best. So if you don't feel you are, you need to upskill, jump jump onto Claudio, like get some more upskilling, you know, do what, read some books over the break, whatever you can do to upskill yourself further and then come back with the belief that you are the best in the marketplace. Mm. Because the the buy the owners will buy your belief of yourself, right? That's the first thing. Yes. Next thing is where I lived my entire real estate career was not in the new business sphere. It was in the past clients. So what are you doing with your past clients? Because they're always the best conversations to have. I used to get the most excitement was when I was meeting and talking to my past clients. So what I'm going to suggest mm-hmm. you do it's not too late. I would ring up 20 of your best clients and go and take them out for lunch between now and Christmas. Yeah, great, great, great suggestion. I would do that. You will get a lot of energy out of that. You'll get people in there going, Angela, thank you so much. I'd give them a little gift and I would say like a little candle or something like that to acknowledge that they've already been a past client of yours. And I don't like the words past client. I, I don't let my team use it. I just say current client because no one's a past client. You know? Yeah. Um, they're current always. And I think if you just did that one thing, forget about next year, forget about finding business and, and discounting your commissions and all that. I'd, I always live by this belief. Think about this. If I was ever going to give a discount, it's not going to be to the new person I meet next week. It's to be the people that have looked that have been using me for the last 30 years. Sure. I'd rather give them it. the discount. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'd rather charge a new person full full freight because um, I don't have a relation there, but not my past clients that have given me three or four listings. They're the ones I'd rather apply the discount to. Now I know it goes against the real estate industry. I don't understand why. I'd rather give a loyal client a huge discount than yeah. somebody new who I don't have any rapport that doesn't like me, doesn't trust me yet, and um, I have no no real relationship with. Give them a discount just to get the business. I'd, I'd rather. So I'd love you to think like that. But yeah. if you lived in your past client space, that's where you're going to get the the most love in real estate. Because okay. Angela, they already know, like, and trust you. Right? Well, you don't have to sell anything to them. Um, Mm. So I lived my entire space in my past client life. So what I do every single day on my my outlook, it used to flash up. On I had I diarized every six months to ring my past clients. So every day I'd open up Outlook, I'd have five calls to make, and I'd just ring them. How you going? And 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 inevitably something would come out of that. Just simple conversations with the people that you so know already. if you want to have a great real estate life, just forget about new business and live in your past clients because the past clients will refer you to yes. new business and you won't have to pitch for it and you won't have to discount. The other thing is is um, build a network. Do you have a network rolling in the area? Do you have accountants, lawyers, bank managers? Involved in the community. Yes, yeah, solicitors, strata managers that you're meeting with regularly to refer business to. Do you have anything like that set up? I do, I do, but there's area for improvement, you know, as you well, said, you know, uh, catching up for a, for a lunch date and, and actually making it more of a regular well, event. The first thing I'd do straight away, what I'd be doing right now, I'd hang up from us, 
making it more of a regular well, event. The first thing I'd do straight away, what I'd be doing right now, I'd hang up from us, I'd ring your top five clients who will take a bullet for you yeah. and I'd say, listen, I know it's the silly season, I'd love to catch up with a quick breakfast before, you know, the end of the year and just mm-hmm. say thank you. You can do maybe do on the same day. You could maybe do three or two breakfasts, one at seven thirty, one at nine. Then maybe do two lunches. You could meet six people in one day if you wanted to, and um, you could knock that over and get that, or line something up for early in the new year to meet the past clients. Correct, okay. and call them current clients. Some really good tips there, uh, Matty. And and what I'd add on top of that for you, Angela, is this: Matt brought in a great point, and the point was around belief. Because going into next year, this is what I think, in, in a good market, anybody can make money, Angela, through the momentum, mm. okay? In a changing market, what it's going to do, it's going to squeeze those guys who are a lot, lot less skilled, who aren't prepared to do the hard work, they're actually going to be, like, gone from the industry. But here's the thing, with belief, going into 2018, my belief is this, it's going to be 80% psychology, 20% strategy because when the market's tough or people are cutting commission or doing deals on marketing or whatever else in your marketplace and you start to believe that, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That means you start to feel it. And when you start feeling that, when you're going into a client to meet them at a listing presentation, that's going to inflame them because they're going to feel that fear. You know, it's they like... They sense it, don't they? They yeah. do. We're, we're like animals. Like you, you think when a, a, a dog is fearful, they will look at you or, or or you go up to a dog and it's a German shepherd and you look fearful, they sense it. So do your clients. So the first thing is work on your belief, exactly what, what Matt LaHood is saying. So I would actually start thinking of, not saying some positive affirmations, but changing the shifting of your mindset, meaning things like, I'm the type of person that enjoys working in this market and simply having conversations with my current clients. And I will make 20 calls a day, right? Focus on what matters, okay? Because what happens is the self-talk is going to take control of you and then that's going to change your physiology and then your attitude, right? So having the wrong mindset and trying to execute at the same time is going to bring zero results, okay? Having the right mindset and executing and believing that you're the best, you're doing the right things in this market, you will get different outcomes and a whole set of different results. But the first thing is change your physiology. What you think about when you're, I suppose, in a, in a down market or you've lost a listing, y- your shoulders are down, your head's down. So your nuance, your body language, your customers pick up that energy. Yep. So you need to make sure and have consciousness around the energy that you bring around your people, okay? And not going in there going... I hope I got that listing. I hope that other agent didn't discount their fee. They're probably going to go and list with them because it's not of me. And the moment the moment you have that in your mindset is the moment that becomes a belief system and that belief system will inflame the other people that you're dealing with and they will sense it. So Ange- yeah. Angela, do you read a lot? Uh, I do. I okay. do. I do like reading, um, you know, listen to a lot of podcasts Okay, as well. so, what, so what's... I'm- Claudio has resonated there with me is I'd be reading or listening to podcasts that have got um, things around strengthening your mind. What you feed into your mind. Right. That's what I took out of that. Do don't you? listen to the radio. Don't listen yeah, to anything. Sure. Just start. Is think about the identity that you want to become in the new year in 2018. Because once you know the person you want to become, that's going to drive your behaviour. So if you're thinking of the person that's like fearful, person that has uncertainty, right, Guess what? That's the type of person of identity that's going to come out. So write down the identity that you want to have in 2018. And that can start from the type of, you know, I want to do X amount of calls, ring my current clients, I want to have one face-to-face each day, I want to meet one current client, you know, twice a week, et cetera, et cetera. Once you start writing that, and writing is such a powerful thing because then the brain understands exactly what you're trying to achieve. But when you're in a downward spiral or, or you're in a negative mindset, the mind feels lost. Okay, so it's super, super important. You write down, have some clarity, even maybe perhaps being a new year, rewrite your business plan, rewrite your goals that you want to achieve. There will be something inside of you that will inflame and that will give you that level of certainty and eradicate that fear that you might be feeling going into the new year. Right. Okay. That's great. Does that I love give you? That. Does that give you some some, some tips? Definitely, definitely. I don't know if that love helps, that. but we. we, we oh, I, I just I love the fact that you know work on on your existing relationships that you've worked so hard to achieve. I, I love that. Absolutely. We sit yeah. there and we focus on new business. Um, and, and the, the people that um, you've proven yourself to, uh, it's definitely something that I wasn't thinking about. Oh, yeah. Look, it's um, do, how many past clients would you have? 
uh, probably would have at least, I would say, about 50. Wow. Okay. Mm. So what a place to start. Exactly. Um, you, I, I Personally, Angela, if I was you, I'd be ringing all of those 50 today. And I'd even, clear my and, diary. And, and even try and get a face-to-face one of them a week or tw- two of them a week. Is that Definitely. buyers and sellers, 50, or is that sellers only? Or uh, I would say buyers and sellers. Okay, combined. so I'd ring every one of them, just say, we're all wishing you all the best for the new year. And the five to ten that you think are really like long-term clients that, are, that, that you know, you had that massive relationship which will only use you, they'll never use you, they're the ones I'd zero in and either take them out for breakfast or get together with some drinks with a group of them or whatever. What I'd love to see you do next year is actually have a VIP client night and invite Mm. them all along. Client appreciation party, love them. Great. As long as Matt and I get invited, okay? That's the main yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. And, and Claudio only drinks well, expensive you, French wine as well. So. We're just drinking a bit of San Pellegrino <laughs> at the moment, Angela. So. Love that. Hey, listen, well, Angela. I just, go I just, on. Yeah, sorry. Go on. What were you going to say, Claudio? I was just going to say thank you so much for joining us in the first episode of The Mentors. Oh, no, thank you for having me. And I just wanted to say what an amazing platform you're creating. You know, it, it, it's it's going to be great having somewhere to to call in and have a bit of a safety net oh, when you need those um, that's great. Those, those thoughts to be sort of ironed out and, and it's great to be able to have it accessible when you need it. That's perfect, awesome. perfect. Thanks, Angela. And if you see it Thank on you. Facebook in the new year, please share it with other people. Let other people know because we want to help as many people as we can and that's our aim for Matt and I, just helping people to be successful and become bigger than you know they can be and the best they can be. Thank you. Sharing your knowledge. That's Thank it. You. Good on you. Good, good on you, Angela. Thanks. We'll talk to you, uh, you. next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.